Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Almighty Allah, the entirely merciful and especially merciful. Dear viewers, I greet you with the greeting of peace, the greeting that had been used by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be unto you. Amin. Dear viewers, I'd like to tell you that one of our tasks that we need to do in this world, particularly in this month of Ramadan, we want to spread peace across the globe. Yes, we spread it by greeting, we spread it by our actions, we spread it by cooperating with other people, we spread it by planning to help people enjoy the world that we are living in in order to do, to prepare ourselves for later life. If we enjoy a kind of peaceful life here, we will feel more comfortable to prepare ourselves, inshallah, for later life. In the line of the last 10 days of Ramadan, in the line of uh, the night of power, I'd like to remind you of a sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ used to do, an authentic sunnah, authentic tradition of the Prophet ﷺ, which is sunnah al-i'tikaf, seclusion. You seclude yourself from this world and use it specifically for ibadah, where you go to the mosque and stay there with this intention in your heart that you are going to spend these times, these last 10 days and nights of Ramadan for Ibadah. Before I get into details about this matter, I'd like to teach you something or to remind you of something that the Prophet وسلم, used to do even before he was a prophet, even he got the message from Allah to be a messenger for all human beings. He used to seclude himself away from the world, away from Mecca, away from the people of Mecca, away from his friends and relatives to go there to the cave of Hira, very high on a mountain, to relax there, to give himself some quality time to reflect upon this world, to see the sky and to see the earth and to reflect upon it and to see, to ask himself perhaps a question like this, who created this universe and for what reason he created us and gets more and more and more seclusion. And by the way, I'd like to tell you that this seclusion is quality of leadership. Most of the leaders of the world, they don't behave normally like other people. They have something a little bit superior than others. They do things that would help them to prepare themselves to be leaders. Leaders would not live between halls. If you live always inside the box, you have no opportunity to see what's outside the box. You cannot see the world around you, around you. You cannot see the skies, you cannot see the rivers, you cannot see what's going on around you if you live in narrow places, if you live inside the box. Leaders all over the world have this quality of going outside the box to see and examine. And this helps us, helps them to be able to make a good vision in their life. This is a quality of leader. And now you have this opportunity to have this time only for Almighty Allah. Remember, He is the one who gave you everything in this life, who gave you a, a wife, who gave you a spouse, who gave you children, who gave you this 
body, who gave you this brain to think, to use it in thinking. He gave you all this food that you have enjoyed in your life. He gave you all these blessings that you cannot count. There is no one who is capable of counting all these blessings. Now it's time to give some of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. And this is the time where you can use it. If you do this seclusion in other times, it's okay, it's nice, but it's not the same reward. The same reward is you do it exactly as the Prophet ﷺ did. Can you do this? I'm sure that you can. But do you love the Prophet ﷺ more? Or you love this dunya more? The love of this world, the love of this materialistic aspect is a great distraction from following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad It's only 10 days and it is within our capacity that the Prophet you used to exclude himself from even his family members, from approaching his family members, which is halal. But yet in the last 10 days, he used to allocate them entirely hasriyan for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you feel when you come out of the mosque at the end of these days, you will feel that the change has happened to you. Because when you, you have already tasted the beauty and the sweetness of this intensive ibadah that you've gone through the month of Ramadan and you will feel more and you will enjoy more and you will taste more this ibadah when you assign days for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only you keep yourself away for everything that connects you with this world when you stay in the mosque you either recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or share the hadith of the Prophet with other or you sit in learning circles and you will find this intensity is the one that makes you change. We hope that we change. We hope that we become better human beings. We hope that we become better Muslims. We want this and the way to do it is the way that the Prophet ﷺ taught us how to do it. Seclusion and the atikaf in the last 10 days it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us if you want to improve. And I wish that you don't do it by yourself. You can take your children, I don't mean the young ones, I mean the old ones, so that they experience the love of Allah. They experience and they taste the beautiful sweetness of the ibadah. So you take your children with you when they are capable of doing this they will learn something new and they will learn how to fix themselves. This is the way to fix our errors. This is the way when you are just assigning this time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, it is possible that you can stay there less than 10 days. It is possible that even you go there with the intention of spending two days or three days, but the right thing to do is to be 10 days, the last 10 days. Just try to keep yourself away from everything in life. Don't think of the properties that you have or what you're going to do after that because you have already planned ahead these 10 days for the sake of Allah. Only 10 days in the whole year. So if you have never done it in your life, take the opportunity to do it this year. It's not, remember, it's not an obligation. It's not an obligation on the Muslim. And this is the mercy of Allah because some people might be very busy in this world and it is difficult for them to leave their jobs. Even though you can stay, you can enter the mosque with the intention, even for some hours, some hours at kaf in the mosque, but you should have this intention when you enter the mosque or before you enter the mosque. So. As much as you can, make a struggle. And this is one essence, the essence of jihad. Struggle yourself. Struggle with the dunya. Fight 
with the temptation of this dunya by and showing Allah that you love him. What we said in other episodes is that if you claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do as the Prophet sallallahu did. And this is one of the things that very authentic that the Prophet sallallahu did it in the last 10 days of Ramadan. We really need to spread this sunnah and to revive this sunnah amongst us. And we wish that even the young ones, the youth, are the ones who, if you do it and you show, this is how you seek the pleasure of Allah. You know the problems that are happening in this world can be solved when you show this love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In no time, it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these problems are so easy to be solved by just word, be and it, if we show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we love him the way that he showed us and the way he showed us in the Quran to do it, we are going to get it, inshallah. Sincerely, we ask Allah to make us of those who sees this opportunity of catching the last 10 days of Ramadan, hoping that our sins will be forgiven and hoping that we will be in paradise. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم